Nurses at a hospital in Machias are walking the picket line for a second day in a row. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. One of the men accused of robbing a pair of businesses in central Maine has received his sentence. And advocates calling for changes to Maine's child welfare system rallied at the State House Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Wednesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. We invite you to give us a call regarding your project and experience the Renewal by Anderson difference. All right, let's check things out this afternoon. Not too bad. We had a few rain showers that passed through last night and earlier this morning. Now we're backing things off. An overall day will be nice with a mixture of clouds and sunshine, so we'll be looking for reasons to get outside. You'll have plenty of that today, especially with the winds. that will be rather quiet as well. Further down to the south, there was some rain just offshore not too far away from Boston. That's moving away as well. We're watching more energy that will be moving in soon. I'll give us some chances for rain showers as we're watching some tracking in from the west going toward the east now across parts of the Midwest. So future cast for today, a mixture of clouds and sunshine. We'll watch for more clouds approaching later on tonight. The rain starts to get in here from the west as we head towards Thursday morning. As for the winds today, tonight and also in the parts of tomorrow, check this out. Looking rather quiet out there. There's a quick breeze at around five miles per hour or so and that looks to be about it. So your forecast for today, lower 60s, part cloudy and an east wind getting up to around five miles per hour at times. By tonight, here we go. Partly cloudy again. Lows in the upper 30s and south wind getting up to around five miles per hour. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Rain showers on the way with highs in the low 50s and a south wind increasing a little bit to around five to ten miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. A partly to mostly cloudy sky. Temperatures overall in the 60s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Susan. Thank you, Devin. Healthcare workers at the Downey's Community Hospital in Machias are walking the picket line again today. It is the second day of a two day strike by nurses and technicians to protest what they say is the administration's refusal to address their concerns about recruitment and retention. They're also concerned about safe staffing levels. A statement from the hospital spokesperson says there are no outstanding negotiation proposals from the union that involve safe staffing, safe working conditions, or patient safety. The nurses and technicians have been negotiating a contract since September 2023, and they have been working without a contract since mid-October. We're here for our patients, we're here for our community, and we're fighting for our community. And we want our hospital to um, focus more on patient-centered care than profit generating. We're really lacking in support staff. Um, you know, if if our nurses and techs are having to do jobs of secretaries and CNAs because there aren't any of those, um, then, you know, it, it takes away from our patient care. A statement from Julie Hickson, the director of marketing and communications for Downey's Community Hospital, says, quote, the union chose to strike over wage negotiations over the past four years. The DECH union members have received unprecedented increases of 40 percent or more in their wages. We are extremely competitive on our current wages and to put more significantly more money into the union compensation would not be financially sustainable for the hospital. As always, we will continue to negotiate with the union to finalize an agreement and quote. The hospital says contingency plans are in place to address the strike and they will continue to provide safe quality health care to the public. The investigation into a fatal shooting in Bangor continues. Divers have been in the Kanduska Extreme looking for evidence in connection with the shooting on Highland Avenue that happened on April 2nd. 24-year-old Daniel Ford Coates of Bangor was pronounced dead at a local hospital after being found with a gunshot wound shortly after 4 a.m. 20-year-old Olivia Babin has been charged with manslaughter. According to court documents, authorities were told Babin threw the gun into the Kanduska Extreme following the shooting. One of the men accused of robbing a pair of businesses in central Maine has received his sentence. 24-year-old Isaac Sterling has been ordered to serve six years in the state prison. Officials say he was the getaway driver in November when he and 24-year-old Trevor Miller held up a Circle K convenience store in Fairfield and also a bank in Waterville. According to the Morning Sentinel, Sterling was also arrested a few months later when he stole money from his girlfriend to buy drugs. A former China resident convicted of multiple sex crimes against a child under the age of 14 is challenging that conviction. Jared Jandro was found guilty of five counts of unlawful sexual contact, one count of sexual solicitation for gross sexual assault, and 17 counts of sexual exploitation of a minor. During a testimony at his trial, Jandro's ex-girlfriend Jessica Cox 
admitted she is the woman who took the photos of the child and sent them to Jandro. Prosecutors said text messages were evidence Jandro persuaded Cox to send him sexually explicit photos. Part of Jandro's challenge centers around the scope of the warrant that allowed police to obtain the messages and photos. No one disputes that when you have an alleged GSA between a defendant and a victim, each party wants every communication between those two. It'd be, it'd be insane to ask otherwise. No decision was made yesterday, and it's unclear at this time when one will be made. The Bangor Standpipe is a favorite landmark for a lot of people in the Bangor area. They'll have to wait a little bit longer if they want to take views from atop the standpipe. The Bangor Water District has announced it will remain closed to the public tours this year. According to the Bangor Daily, some needed repairs were recently revealed during an inspection. Officials say the standpipe will remain operational during the work, but the building will be closed while repairs and maintenance are carried out. Advocates calling for changes to Maine's child welfare system rallied at the State House Tuesday to spread their message on the last day of April, which is Child Abuse Awareness Month. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with those in attendance to learn more. We often say how terrible events are the catalyst for change. How much more terrible does it have to get? Walk a Mile in Their Shoes is an organization formed by former State Senator Bill Diamond with the mission of ending the deaths of children in state care. He says despite the increase in awareness, the problem is continuing to get worse. In 2021, we had 34 children in state care that died, and that was a, a record number. And not to be more uh, depressing, but in the last two years, 54 children have died. One of the speakers at the rally was Mary Ann Spearin, a superintendent for two school districts, who says oftentimes the voices of educators who are legally required to report suspected cases of abuse and neglect goes unanswered. We make reports to the state hotline. From there, we trust that it goes somewhere else and that somebody else is then following up with the kids and the family. And having been in the school systems, I know that it went days sometimes without that happening. One of the other topics touched upon at the rally is the need for more to be done to increase transparency and regulation for DHHS. This past legislative session, lawmakers had the opportunity to separate the Office of Child and Family Services from DHHS. That bill passed in the Senate but was killed in the House. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to continue the discussion because, as you know, it passed in the Senate. Um, and so I think the House, we could have some good discussion about it. DHHS has said they will be taking into consideration suggestions by Walk a Mile in Their Shoes and other groups for how to improve the safety of Maine's children. Diamond says he'll be paying close attention. What we're going to do from this point forward is we're going to hold accountable the changes that we're hearing may be made. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. There's been another major bust of an alleged illegal marijuana grow operation in our area. The Somerset County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant in Madison where they say they found a truckload of marijuana plants and processed cannabis. This bus was led by the Somerset County Sheriff's Office with assistance from the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency, Homeland Security and other agencies. Over 1,800 marijuana plants and 10 pounds of processed cannabis were seized in the operation, as well as other assorted drug-related documentation and paraphernalia. Although no individuals were located at the residence, charges are expected against the individuals responsible for the alleged illegal operation once the case is reviewed by the Somerset County District Attorney's Office. An additional detail out of the 14 similar illegal marijuana grow operations that the Somerset County Sheriff's Office has interrupted, they say this residence has had the worst case of black mold infestation in the interior of the buildings. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, a Millbridge business is expanding to offer doggy day adventures. We'll have details when we return. At Hood, our love for New England inspired New England Creamery. We make it with premium Hood milk and cream, then we overload it with the good stuff. Like Green Mountain Mint Chip with a rich, fudgy swirl. Main Sweet Blueberry with real delicious blueberries. And Cape Cod Fudge Shop, packed with fudgy truffles. Hood's New England Creamery, from Hood, for New England. Try all 10 flavors. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs. 
supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. Ever wish you could put a different spin on things? Play the Golden Spin Instant Ticket from the main lottery and you could win a trip to Las Vegas. Enter your non-winning tickets for a chance to win a trip to the Golden Nugget Casino and up to $250,000 at the Tri-State Golden Spin event. Why just spin your wheels when you could go to Vegas for the spin of a lifetime? The Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub is world-renowned for beautiful dining with a delicious view, featuring award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. It's a true destination dining experience. Relax and unwind in an intimate space with your loved ones, family, and friends. We are pet-friendly, so your furry friends are always welcome to join you at your table on the deck, whether it's a special occasion or any occasion. The Lucerne Inn is the perfect choice for your business or family gathering. Long-term care insurance can be expensive and it is a use it or lose it policy. Is this still how long-term care works today? In the traditional sense, when you're buying a traditional yeah. long-term care insurance, it's a use it or lose it, like your home insurance. You're paying a premium um, to your home insurance and if your house burns down, glad you have it. If your house doesn't burn down and you don't use the insurance, it's use it or lose it, okay? You, you've paid all those premiums, but you did that. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. On Monday, Governor Mills issued her final decision on two gun control bills passed by the legislature. The governor allowed one of those bills, a 72-hour waiting period for all firearms purchases, to go into law without her signature. The bill will affect all purchases made at licensed gun shops. The governor also vetoed a bill that would have banned bump stock-like devices, citing the bill's, quote, ambiguous language and the fact that a federal ban already exists. Gun control advocates say they're thankful for the laws that did pass this session, but disappointed at the veto. What a momentous day this is for Maine, um, that we are now going to have expanded background checks and 72-hour waiting periods is an enormous shift and a really big step in the direction of gun safety. Um, we have further to go, as uh, as is um, evident in the fact that she vetoed the bump stock ban. Because the waiting period, the bill was not passed under emergency legislation. It won't take effect until 90 days after the legislature adjourned. The legislature will return to take up the veto in the coming weeks. Secretary of State Shanna Bellows is asking for the public to weigh in on the wording of a referendum question on November's ballot. The question centers around limiting the amount of money that can be donated to independent political action committees. Those groups are not associated with a candidate, but use money to support a candidate. Currently, the question is worded, quote, do you want to set a $5,000 limit for giving to groups that spend money independently to support or defeat candidates for office? Secretary Bellow says asking for public input can help ensure the question makes sense to the average voter. And as secretary, my job is to draft the question, but this is the people's question and will be the people's vote. Therefore, it's really important that members of the public have an opportunity to weigh in on the content of the question. We've posted a draft question and now people have 30 days to share their point of view. Not on whether the question is a yes vote or a no vote, but is the question clear? Is it concise and direct as possible? To submit your comment or learn more, you can visit the Secretary of State's website. Recently, Maine was awarded $272 million in federal funding to help expand broadband in the state. Now you can help determine where that money actually goes. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard explains. The statelet challenge process is the, the next step in our BEAD journey. That's our the broadband equity access and deployment program 
Brian Allenby is the communications director for the Maine Connectivity Authority. He says the state was awarded over $270 million in federal funding to help expand broadband access in the state. They've started a state-led challenge process for municipalities, tribal nations, and nonprofits to participate in and share their data with MCA. Uh, there are a number of different types of challenges. Everything from whether the service that's reported to be available at a location actually is available, um, whether the, the speeds reported at that location are actually delivered. Of course, if you're not a municipality, tribal nation, or nonprofit, you can still participate in the process by doing an individual speed test. The, what's unique here is it's a little bit different than some of the speed tests you've seen in the state of Maine in the past. We need three separate speed test samples from that same location over three different days. Um, the system is set up once you register your speed test the first time you take your first test, it'll send you a reminder email each successive day. So you just have to go back and, and take three of those tests. The reason why the challenge process is so important, Allenby says, is because they're working from older data from the FCC, which may be outdated or inaccurate. It's really important that um, those organizations as eligible challengers and individuals um, can take part in the statewide challenge process to help us understand where the data in that FCC map isn't accurate. Maine Connectivity Authority will take the results of these challenges and determine how the funding gets distributed based on the needs of the community. To learn more about the state-led challenge process, you can visit our website. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A woman from Millbridge is expanding her pet care business. Lindsay Wickland is now offering doggy day adventures to her list of services. Our Jody Hersey has details. Come on, boy. Lindsay Wickland is a University of Maine graduate who started pet care by Lindsay in 2020. Her business includes grooming, pet sitting, dog walking, and now doggy day adventures. I really wanted to give people sort of an alternative to fill in the gap, I guess, um, especially with the weather getting nicer, people wanting their dogs to get out more and socialize with other dogs and get some exercise. I thought that like a two hour thing during the week would be fun for them to do. Wickland has every client fill out a form with information about their pet, including breed, size, temperament, and whether or not their dog is up to date on its shots, and if that pet has ever been exposed to doggy daycare. She then uses that information to determine which dogs would socialize well together during a daytime adventure. Wickland says outings could include a hike through the Bangor City Forest or a few hours spent in the afternoon at the Bangor Dog Park. <laughs> and then I love to do a small dog group as well as a um, like elderly slash disabled slash special needs, which will be sort of like a shorter thing so that they can stop when they need to. With Pet Care by Lindsay employees located in Bangor, Waterville and the Mid Coast, Wickland says her goal is to have adventures offered in all those service areas seven days a week. In Milford, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, pro-Palestine protests have bubbled over, leading to arrests around the country. We'll be right back. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. There are plenty of good reasons to have a dock at your camper lakefront home and to choose a Shoremaster premium dock system or floating poly dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Lightweight and durable Shoremaster high grade aluminum docks are easy to install and maintain. And poly docks are perfect for dealing with deeper fluctuating water levels. Both offer a wide range of available configurations. There's a Shoremaster or poly dock system that's right for you and you'll find it at Hammond Lumber Company. Hood Milk and You. That's why we do what we do. Day in and day out. Making milk you can trust. With no artificial growth hormones. And we protect Hood Milk with our light block bottle. We care about our milk because we know how much you care about what you give your family. So you can feel good about Hood. 
Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. The most important thing is family. AAA shares the same family values. For over 100 years, AAA has been providing legendary service and has helped what it values most, its members. Join our family and you could save on your auto insurance policy with our competitive pricing. Just like family, we offer you our support when you need it, whether it's questions about your policy or with our most trusted roadside assistance service. Visit AAA.com insurance and find out how much you could save. Police in New York City say they've cleared a building at Columbia University that was taken over by protesters for 20 hours. Nearly 50 people have been arrested. A spokesperson for the university says they called in police because they were left with no choice. ABC's Perry Russom has more. New York City police inside Hamilton Hall at Columbia University, searching for protesters who took over the building. Officers getting inside multiple ways, including using this SWAT truck to get in through a window on the second floor. Dozens of people arrested with protesters chanting outside. More demonstrators arrested after the scuffle with police. The decision for police to move in came with the request of Columbia's president. In a letter to police, she writes, the building occupation, encampments, and related disruptions pose a clear and present danger. These once peaceful protests are being exploited by professional outside agitators. Columbia is one of several colleges and universities around the country seeing demonstrations, including here at UCLA overnight, where pro-Israeli demonstrators surrounded a pro-Palestinian encampment. At Stanford, teachers standing by students. Campuses across the United States, even places like Humboldt State, I mean, obscure places as well as Columbia. So it's really bridged the gap between all these different kinds of institutions. And back at Columbia, in that letter to police, the university is asking officers to have a presence on campus through at least May 17th. That is two days after commencement there. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his troops will invade Rafah with or without a hostage deal. He says the city is the last major stronghold for Hamas in the southern Gaza and where around one million Palestinians are sheltering, most of whom fled other parts of Gaza. The warning comes as Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is in the region pushing for a ceasefire. The U.S. has repeatedly said it opposes the Rafah operation until Israel presents a credible plan for evacuating and protecting the estimated 1.5 million people seeking shelter there. Netanyahu has faced pressure from his government to not proceed with a deal that might prevent the invasion. Former President Trump is shining new light on what his potential second term might look like. His new comments on immigration are now stirring debate. Speaking to Time magazine, the former president outlined his plans to deport millions of migrants illegally in the U.S., saying, quote, This is, is country changing. It's country threatening and it's country wrecking. They have wrecked our country. He added that he his, would use the National Guard and local law enforcement to carry out the deportations. If they weren't able to do it, then he would use the military. When asked about a law prohibiting the use of military force on civilians, Trump replied, quote, well, these aren't civilians. These are people that aren't legally in our country. Trump was also asked about the potential for violence after November's election. He said, quote, it depends on the fairness of the election. When we return, Devin Biggs has our five-day five forecast. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Hello, this is George Whelan with Down East Direct Cremation. Now, anytime, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year, from the comfort of your desktop or the convenience of your mobile device, you can summon transport and arrange a simple, affordable, respectful Down East Direct Cremation for your deceased loved one. 
just by using the button exclusively at downeastdirectcremation.com. All you need is the location address of the person who has died, their vital statistics information, a valid credit card for payment, and that's it. No need to pick up the telephone, no need to answer a bunch of questions, no need to come into the store, and it's still just $9.75 complete. It's so easy, even I can do it. For more information, visit us at downeastdirectcremation.com or call us at 207-225-5332. Simple, affordable, respectful. The button. Only at downeastdirectcremation.com. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power. Everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Eggs are consumed in a variety of ways, poached, hard-boiled, scrambled, and even fried. However, there are concerns that eggs may raise cholesterol levels and cause heart problems. New research is helping us learn more about the nutritional benefits of eating eggs. Here's ABC's Christiane Cordero. There are known benefits to eating eggs, but concerns remain about eating too many and its effect on your cholesterol. Yet, research now suggests that eating a dozen or more eggs per week may not have a negative impact on cholesterol for adults over 50. Good and bad cholesterol levels didn't change in a meaningful way over the course of several months in adults consuming a dozen or more eggs per week compared to adults who ate less than two eggs per week. These results were presented during an annual American College of Cardiology conference. For most people, eggs are nutritious when eaten in moderation. But if you have any questions, please speak to your health care provider about your own cholesterol levels and dietary needs. With this Medical Minute, I'm Christiane Cordero. Residents of Bingham need to boil their water. According to the Bingham Waters District, Jeffrey McKenzie, a boil water order is in effect until Thursday afternoon. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by the Furniture Gallery. Spring into savings with exceptional savings in all departments. The Furniture Gallery is a main family-owned company with locations in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and Wyndham. Let's get into things this afternoon. Wave heights are very low. We have no advisories in effect along the coast or on land for that matter either. You may have noticed I haven't shown that map lately because not much to show. It's just a blank map right now with no advisories. But wave heights are down to around a foot right now, so we're looking pretty good moving forward. But on land, though, again, we had some rain showers last night and early this morning. Those are moving out of here now. And pretty much for the rest of the day, a mixture of clouds and sunshine will be common. So it'll be a good day to get outside, especially with the winds backing off as well. We're watching some action dragging in from the west to the east across parts of the Midwest. That'll be moving in our direction, and that'll give us some opportunities for rain showers coming up as we head towards tomorrow. So futurecast moving forward, showing a mixture of clouds and sunshine for today. Get outside and enjoy it. Overall, some clouds tonight and a few spots, but the clouds really increase for tomorrow with opportunities for rain showers, especially in the western parts of the state, mainly to draw a line from Bangor on west will have the best opportunities. That gets out of here by later on Thursday night. And then pretty much as we head towards Friday morning, there's some clouds to watch out for, and that looks to be about it. Regarding rainfall, though, we have a little bit of rainfall on the way. Again, draw a line from Bangor to uh, other areas and off to the west, like Greenville, seeing some areas around a half inch to perhaps a little bit more of rain, but otherwise further off towards these across the rest of our viewing area, not a whole lot of rain expected. So draw a line from Bar Harbor, Bangor, and farther off towards the north and and west and those will be the best opportunities for rainfall. Average high temperature is 61 degrees. We'll do lower 60s today than lower 50s Thursday. Back in the low 60s Friday and Saturday. Upper 50s Sunday and then we're back in the upper 60s. Look at this as we head towards Monday to Tuesday of next week and of course with the warmer weather things are starting to bloom. The tree pollen is high right now though so maybe sneezing or having other allergy issues. This is the reason why with the pollen increasing for the trees and of course grass, weed and mold not too bad just yet but I'm sure grass will be increasing before you know it as well. 
So far today, lower 60s, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, and an east wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. By tonight, here we go, upper 30s under a partly cloudy sky, and a south wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow, here we go, lower 50s, mostly cloudy, rain showers on the way, and a south wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, let's check out that extended forecast brought to you by the Furniture Gallery. Mostly cloudy on Friday, highs in the low 60s, lower 60s again for you Saturday, also under a mostly cloudy sky. More rain showers Sunday with highs in the upper 50s. Thank you, Devin. I can relate to those allergies. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.